How's it going everybody? 8 Second Game here back with another Apex Legends video and today we're doing something that I'm extremely excited for. The Season 9 Legacy Patch Notes have just dropped for Apex and I'm super super excited for it because I've been really looking forward to the season. The game has kind of felt stale and mundane to me so I'm really hoping that a few things in this patch notes will really kind of shake things up a little bit, really get me back into the game, really get me to fall in love with the game again. Uh, arenas are one thing that I'm really looking forward to so I'm really looking forward to reading all the stuff about that. I've been avoiding social media so I've been avoiding Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, everything to try to not see any spoilers for this. Uh, I want you guys to see my genuine first time reactions. So, uh, you know, without any further ado, roll the intro. Let's hop into this. Now, starting off, new for Apex Legends Legacy Arena Mode. I'm really excited for this. The games are going underground into the introduction of the new permanent mode arenas fully reassembled. Fully reassembled and unimpressed with the glitz and glamour of Apex games, former Apex Predator Ash is taking the competition back to its roots, a pure form of combat. Simple 3 vs 3, really excited, Party Crasher, that's one of the maps, I guess that's the yeah Mirage Voyage one that's cra uh, crashed. This one I'm really looking forward to, I think uh, whoever holds Mirage Voyage will probably be the winner, the way that this is kind of laid out I think, I think most uh, fights will happen around Mirage Voyage. It looks like it has height advantage on this, uh, might be the angle. But I'm really excited to see how that plays out. Uh, da -da, able to show off your skills, the arena takes place in a ritzy downtown plaza where players can choose to engage Crash Mirage Voyage or opulent two-story buildings that make up the downtown. Stay vigilant. The both map hosts a variety of engagement distances, both close quarters and long distances. I'm really excited for that. I think this is probably going to be my favorite map out of the two. Because this one, I think it's going to fall into the same issues as uh, some of the stuff on World's Edge where uh, the sun plays a lot of effect into that and like outdoor, the shades, stuff like that. It's nitpicky, and that's literally just like top tier stuff, like high tier lo lobbies that really run into those issues. Uh, so if you're kind of a casual player, you probably won't run into those issues. You'll probably enjoy this map just fine. It's just me being a nitpicky asshole. Uh, but I'm really excited for this one. This phase runner map looks really, really beautiful, and I'm really excited to see how this plays out because um, I think that this phase runner will add a lot of really cool rotations, a lot of really cool flanking abilities. Um, some legends might be able to trap it up, you know. I'm, I'm really excited to see how it plays out. Obviously, gardens, artillery, and thermal station. It's the same stuff. Not really much to talk about, but I am excited to see, uh, you know, how they play out in-game. Really, really excited. Valkyrie, the long-awaited legend. Uh, people are really excited for this. I never really... I played Titanfall 2 a little bit on stream. Never really played uh, a whole lot of it. Um, never really played online. N haven't gone past, like, the third or fourth mission. I don't even know, so... A lot of people are really excited because they're Titanfall 2 fanboys or fangirls. And they're really excited for Valkyrie. I don't know yet. Uh, passive VTOL Jet. Use your jetpack to reposition or reach high places. You have a limited fuel and cannot use weapons while flying. Can I use weapons? Oh, that's actually pretty cool. I thought it was going to be exactly like Pharaoh, where you just like jetpack up and shoot down. Uh, for all the Overwatch players, or not Overwatch players, uh, Pharaoh is a legend from Overwatch. That's where I thought that they were kind of like going with this. I made a joke on my TikTok a while ago, not a while ago, a couple days ago, and people got really mad saying, it's not Thera, it's North Star, and I really don't care. Anyway, Tactical Missile Swarm. Fires a swarm of mini rockets which damage and disorientate, disorient the enemy. Um, I'm really I'm excited to see how this plays out. I think you can do some really cool plays of this, really cool uh, nade Tactical Missile Swarm plays Horizon Alt with this. I think it'll be really cool. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage. I think it only did like 50 or something when I saw it. Uh, but it does like mess them up like a crypto EMP or an arc star. So really excited to see how that kind of plays out Skyward dive is that how you say that skyward dive take to the skies reposition long distance across the map Your squad mates can join in this will be really cool for like really hard rotations But I did see a video of this. Um, I think it was uh, Titanfall blog on Twitter posted it where you kind of like hover in place and then you start to shoot up after like two seconds so i think it'll be pretty easy to beam someone out of that if you have a decent line of sight it's not instant where you activate it and you just start shooting up like a horizon tactical so i'm really excited to see how this plays into the game because i think you can probably laser somebody pretty easily off of this and the way that they shot up it kind of looked similar speed to going up a zip line and you're going straight up so Maybe people are going to be able to learn how fast you're going up and be able to lead their shots well well enough to be able to beam somebody off of that, but we'll have to see. And I wonder if Valkyrie gets downed while doing this. Do our teammates fall too, or do, do they continue to, to be released? I don't know. I'm excited to see. 
Uh, oh, she has a recon. That's really cool. I'm actually really excited to see how that she has recon. She'll play into uh, competitive probably then. Like ALGS, GLL. She'll probably be uh, like an actual staple character potentially with um, the rotation abilities and stuff. Like the rotation with this, you n you no longer have to use balloons. Like if this is a fast charge, you get like hella fast rotations with just her. That'll be really interesting. I'm actually really excited to see how that plays out. I can't wait to see uh, how like top tier rotational teams, CLG, TSM, GYD. Um, I can't wait to see how they play that. Uh, it'll be really interesting. Uh, bow check. Compound bow. Precision marksman weapon that rewards skilled and confident hands. So it's probably going to be like another iteration of the wingman. Uh, probably a better version of the 3030. I personally don't like that they're adding... They did two single shot weapons in a row. They did the 3030 and uh, then the bow check. So it's two single shot uh, precision weapons. Marksman rifles, I think they're calling them right now. So kind of not a fan that they did that uh two single shot weapons in a row but i'm kind of excited to see the montages that come out with this i'm excited to miss all my shots with this it's really cool i'm really looking forward to it olympus the lost fleet update uh fleet of mysterious ships has made their way to olympus and brought with them an otherworldly parasitic plant that's begun to take root along the surface the lead ship icarus has docked on the city and has changed the landscape for good right through the claustrophobic halls of the ghost ship and searched the corpses for mystery key card okay yeah that that actually sounds really cool it's like the a weird iteration of like the flood from halo that's really really cool so i guess like that's the new ship the bonsai um yeah that adds another poi so that's really good because right here if you like if you didn't if you got a flight path like right here and you didn't want to go bonsai and you didn't want to go solar because orbital cannon has like no loot uh it's really spread out and it's really not worth it this adds another poi for ranked rotation but i don't think it's the olympus isn't ranked. olympus is ranked Sorry, I'm, I'm wrong. It's World's Edge and then Olympus in the splits. So I think this will really open up more uh, options for ranked on Olympus. And I think it'll op open up a lot of, you know, more opportunities, more circles, stuff like that. Really good change in my opinion. Uh, hopefully it plays out with, um, you know, rotational abilities because there were some nice rotations uh, alongside here. So hopefully the rotations are still fine. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Starter kit and loot changes. One of my favorite things to come out of this. I saw this already. You spawn with uh, white helmet, white armor, white knockdown shield, two shield cells, and two syringes. I'm really excited for that. And white uh, spawn. Uh, so spawn chances for level one Evo shield in the loop have been significantly reduced. We removed level one helmets and knockdown shields from the loop. Okay, so they've removed these two, but they left the shield in. That's interesting. I like that. I kind of like that. Along with lower to remove spawn chances for these items, we rebalance the loot pool such that higher level versions as will appear nearly at the same. Uh, did you know? Mm, okay. So weapons will appear more often. Weapons, ammo, stuff like that. Okay, that's really really cool. That's really good. I actually really like that they're uh, they're taking a, a stance on the, the cluttered loot pool. And I know that a lot of people that play Warzone or play Fortnite or whatever, other people that play other games are going to come in, slam their feet down and be like, oh, another game that's worse than, than this. You Apex people are so spoiled and shouldn't be complaining. La -da 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 -da. And I hate it. Just because one game's bad doesn't excuse another game from being bad. And I really like the steps that Respawn is taking in order to kind of cut down on the cluttered loot pool and reduce RNG in this game. It's really cool. I really like that. Emotes. I don't care about emotes. Um, what the hell? What is anti-peak? Sorry, what? Oh. So it's showing how sorry, I'm I'm reading. I was I was really focused on that. Because I'm trying to like take all this information in. Sorry, I, I blanked for a second. This is really cool. It's showing how you could use this to third person peek around a rock. That's really cool. I really like that. Um Corner peeking, competitive integrity is still paramount. So enemies of the character couldn't see in the first place will not be shown. Oh, that's really cool. That's actually really, really good. I like that. That is a fantastic addition to the game. Respawn using their heads? What? Uh, it's Battle Pass. I'm really excited for this. Um, I think that the Octane skin is going to look really cool. They actually have a decent Rampart skin, so that's really cool. I don't like the, the mask. I, I think that this is going to stick out like a sore thumb in the game. Uh, so if you're trying to rat or something, you're just going to get lasered, but... Who knows uh low profile 
thank God they took low profile out of the game. It made no sense to have it on characters like Watson and Lifeline. It was stupid. I did not like it. Um, thank, thank the Lord it is gone. Huh. Sigh of relief. Um, I used to be a Watson main. I have like seven and a half thousand kills, something like that on Watson. So, um, depending on how Watson goes back into the meta, I might consider switching back to Watson. I really liked Watson. I love how she played. Um, potentially going back to Watson. Uh, but now, going into the actual changes of the game, the legend updates, the meat and potatoes of uh, the Apex patch notes. Lifeline. This is a huge buff for Lifeline. I don't care what anybody says, this is going to be a buff. The combat revive no longer deploys a shield, can now revive two players at the same time, can now cancel active revives in the process to allow your teammates to defend themselves with a knockdown shield. That is unbelievably good. That is so good. Like, you actually have to be careful about your revives now. You can't just throw down a shield and not for, like, not care. The dock heal drone, the, uh, the increase, uh, the, the increase is, uh, is awesome. That's great. 5 HP per second, or 8 HP per second, that's, that's huge. That's awesome. Uh, the cooldown reduced from 6 minutes to 5 minutes, that's cool. Now guarantees, guarantees an upgrade impossible in 3 categories. Body shield, other equipment, helmet, backpack, knockdown shield, and a weapon attachment based on your team's current gear with the package arrives. That's really cool. It actually scans your gear to know what you need. That's awesome. Uh, this is a really good change for lifeline. I think this is actually going to do a lot for actual good lifeline players. I think it's going to weed out a lot of bad lifeline players. Um, people that kind of crutched on her combat shield a little bit. But um, I think that now there's going to be a lot more thought going into lifeline revives. I think there's going to be a lot more people actually like contemplating how they're going to revive and actually thinking stuff out. So this is going to just cut down on the bad lifeline players because they're going to swap to other characters. But the good lifeline players are really going to rise to the top and really be kind of a shining symbol in this patch. I think this is going to be cool. Octane stim reduce cooldown from four seconds to one second. Increased health cost. Uh, 12 HP to 20. So that's only an eight HP increase. That's not that bad. Th that's not that bad. Increased bullets thrown in the air while shooting from the launch pad low trajectory. Yeah, I I never really shot in the air, but I know a lot of people that did, and I know a lot of people really liked that. That's a good patch. I still think Octane will be huge. I think Octane will still be really strong. If he's not S tier, he's probably still A tier. Um, <laughs> I think he's going to be good still. I, there's nothing else to say. I think he's still going to be really good. Okay, Loba, Burglar's best friend, can now run inside at full speed while aiming the bracelet. And while the bracelet is in the air, Loba will no longer be slowed after translocating. That's really good. That's a huge buff for her. Uh, fix a lot of bugs that cause the bracelet to toss to fail. That's good. And the Black Market Boutique can cool down increase from 90 seconds to 112 seconds. So that's a two minute. Two minutes? Yeah. 60 seconds, 120 seconds. Yeah, so two minutes. That's not that long in that game. And y y Ultimate Accelerant, stuff like that, Gold Helmets. This is a huge buff for Loba. I think that she's... Um, not going to fall into the meta because of this, but I think she's going to be a lot more playable for people that do enjoy playing Loba. I think that you're going to find a lot more quality of life stuff. You're going to be able to get out of situations a lot better. Stuff like that. Horizon. I heard they absolutely gutted Horizon, so I wanted to see this. Gravity lifts reduced lift speed by 30%. Reduced side-to-side -side acceleration. Limited the time you can sit atop the gravity lift to two seconds. Oh, my lord. Yup, this is a huge nerf to Horizon. That is a huge nerf to Horizon. That is, I don't think she's S tier anymore. I think she actually falls down into A, potentially even B. The reduced speed by 30%, that's, you're gonna be able to hit her a lot easier. They're only gonna be sitting up there for two seconds now. So if, if they have height, you can just sit up behind a rock for two seconds or just run around for two seconds. That's actually huge. I think this is a potentially even too much. They could have just done with the reduced lift speed or reduced side to side acceleration. One of the two, but like, or like one of the three, actually. This is four, four nerfs, but I don't think the cooldown really uh, affects that much. But like, these are three nerfs. That's huge. Horizon's probably not going to be uh, played in competitive anymore because of that. I think they were gonna, might, people might swap back to Pathfinder. Huh. That's I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, not that she's getting that much of a nerf, but that, you know, she's not going to be as needed in competitive or like not as needed. Sorry, but not as influential in competitive. Moving on, though. Fuse Knuckle Cluster. Fuse now has two stacks and Knuckle Cluster reduced cooldown from 25 to 20. Okay, so I was wrong. So it wasn't 18. It was 20. Um, <clears throat> I made a tier list video 
talking about my picks for the tier list of arena uh it was just a blind pick so if you guys are interested i didn't have any information going into it i didn't have the patch notes i didn't get to play season nine early so if you are interested in watching that uh, i'll leave a card somewhere up here if i remember to if i don't i'm sorry um but yeah, knuckle cluster it's not really gonna change these it's not gonna change him at all he wasn't he's not gonna be that strong bangalore uh thick and bangalore smoke it's just gonna be annoying it's not gonna change her it's just gonna be more annoying i have the all father no longer receives assists from i the all father on bloodhound that is huge for rank grinders nothing else but like people that were crutching on bloodhound and ranked uh relying on the scans in order to climb that's all it's gonna affect crypto crypto's drone can now scan and open care packages quality of life thing can no longer use the drone to hijack a respawn beacon that's already in use that's nice that, you know, just some quality of light changes on crypto that's really nice i like that all in all good patches uh good stuff yeah uh marksman weapon category the g7 scout and 3030 are currently in the assault rifle weapons category but they're a bit strange in that category i agree due to their firing style and some of their handing values similarly <clears throat> the triple take fell off place in the sniper rifle category i disagree with that it was always a sniper rifle uh, with the introduction of the bow check bow, we felt it was a good time to introduce a new weapons category, marksman weapons, which include the G7, 3030, triple take, and bow check. Weapons in this category are precision weapons that are most effective up to medium long range with this sort of in-between assault rifle snipers. This allows us to begin moving the settings of these weapons towards more consistent value for the class and make the settings of ARs and snipers more consistent with its outliers. I like it. I like it a lot. For starters, we're increasing the movement speed while aiming down sights for marksman weapons. They were at sniper speeds and will not be able to... Now between sniper and AR speeds. Additionally, we've done some targeting normalization for hipfire and spread amounts. That'll probably change the G7 into a, a, a much much more of a menace than it is now. Having uh, faster speeds with like the spread changes, that'll make the G7 a whole lot more menacing than it is. <laughs> That's actually huge. Supply drop rotation. This season, we're taking the Peacekeeper out of the supply drop and putting the triple take in, in its place. Of course, with the, any supply drop changes, the weapons will have their stats updated. See how each weapon can change below. <sighs> I'm kind of happy that the Peacekeeper's out, but it was one of the hardest weapons for them to balance before it went in. So I'm excited to see how they try to balance it now. I don't agree with that the triple take was going in. It should have been the Spitfire. It should have been the Devotion, something like that. Um, now there's two sniper rifles in the care package. So if the triple take doesn't one shot to the head when it's fully charged, it's not going to be worth picking up. It's stupid. I don't like that. <clears throat> so, uh, sorry. But yeah, fully kitted rotation. I'm really excited to see this. Uh, wingman, Bowtrack, Hemlock, R9, Sentinel. I like the fully kitted Wingman. Um, those are really cool. Removed 3030 Repeater, 301 Mozambique, Longbow, and Spitfire. I really like that the Spitfire is no longer fully kitted because that was always a pain in the ass. I liked the fully kitted 3030, uh, not sorry, 3030, R301. I really like that. Uh, other than that, yeah, I'm really excited for this, uh, this rotation. This will be really good. This will be a lot of fun. Hop ups, shatter caps, fire a select toggle between shatter mode and standard mode and shatter mode, and shatter mode rounds split into a blast pattern on fire. This hop up will be equipped with a 3030 repeater in the bow check. Ew, the 3030. Oh, I'm, I'm excited to see how that plays out because it's going to be like a shotgun up close then? I don't know. That'll be weird. Um, Dead Eyes Tempo, firing at the perfect moment, increases fire rate. This can currently be attached to the Sentinel and the bow check. The Sentinel fires faster now? If the Sentinel's going to be firing faster, that might move the Sentinel up in my list. Because the issue with the Sentinel is it hit hard, but it, was, it took forever to reload. So, hmm. Hammer Point and Skull Pierce are being vaulted, though. Ew. I like Hammer Points. I like Hammer Points a lot. Um, and the no Skull Piercer, that'll be interesting. Now the Wingman only has the Quick Draw, which Quick Draw wasn't horrible, but like I, the Skull Piercer was nice. Assault Rifles. Reducing the Headshot Multiplier from the Assault Rifles. Reducing, sorry, not removing. <laughs> Reducing the headshot multiplier for all the cyphers from 2.0 to 1.75. That'll be a little bit of a change. I don't know. I think it'll be kind of more noticeable if you're in like a strict headshot battle. But if you're just beaming somebody, I don't think you'll be able to notice it. Peacekeeper comes with a precision choke by default. We can be toggled off. That's nice. Pellet damage reduced from 10 to 9. Don't really know if that'll affect anything. Rechamber time increased from 9 seconds to 1.1. That'll probably be a little bit of effective. Reload times increase. Oh, oh wow, empty, three, three and a half seconds to reload from empty. That's actually huge. That's a long time. Pellet spread increased. Uh, quickly just tried after the ADS and so. They did try to balance it a little bit. I will, I will give them that. They did try to balance it. I'm excited to see how it plays out in game. Because once, I, like I said earlier, the Peacekeeper was one of the hardest guns for them to balance. We'll see how it plays out. Um, 
I think like the the highest you could hit for with a peacekeeper is like 146 or something. So I guess you're not gonna be like close to one shotting anybody anymore. I think you're gonna be hitting like 120s probably something like that. Um, probably a lot of 100s. So we'll see how it goes. Has a great weapon, a couple nine ammo clip and 63 reserve ammo. That's actually a decent amount. Fire rate increased from 1.2 to 1.3. Not bad. Charge time not bad. Retains charge briefly after leaving ADS. That's kind of cool actually. Um, increased speed will. So it's not really gonna be better. You're just gonna you're gonna see a triple take and go. Ah, oh. I think the triple take's gonna be kind of like how the L star was way back in the day. Uh, I think you're gonna look at it and be like, you get open a care package, see the triple take, you saw the L star, you're like, oh, that's fucking bullshit, and you just walk away. So, um, increased recoil control ability early in the pattern, huh? So havoc's getting a little bit of a recoil buff. Fumes will be happy about that. Reduced recoil control ability in the early pattern. So they increased the recoil. Okay, so uh, I was told that there was no Spitfire nerf coming in. So I was told that there was no Spitfire nerf. Uh, but it looks like there is a Spitfire nerf. I don't. It's only early in the pattern, so I really don't think it's going to affect that much. I really don't think it's going to change a whole lot. I think the Spitfire is still going to be super better. 30-30 increased leg damage multiplier. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Um, the G7, the Markman changes. Uh, longbow increased headshot multiplier. Okay, so the wingman is still the wingman and the longbow are still keeping their, their headshot damage. So it's just gonna be a wingman with like half a skull piercer and a quick draw now. So I actually like that. I like that a lot. Um, increased mag size from four to six. Move the lower two pellets inward on in the blast pattern. So it'll be easier to hit all three pellets. Huh. All right. Yeah. That's that's cool. Six shots in the Mozambique. I don't think it's gonna be meta. Um. Yeah, this brings up the base power in line for so only fighting a Mozambique in the early match gives you more of a fighting chance. Yeah, that that that's good. Uh, lowered fire rate, gross. They lowered the fire rate, 15 to 18. I don't think it's gonna be a aim and movement slowed from remove uh removed from the initial stick. So that's nice. So if you get stuck, you can actually get away from your teammates. You don't have to tell them to get away from you. That's nice. I really like that. Quality of life, badger now sorted by category, filtered uh, all or unlocked. Oh, okay, that's really nice. That's a really, really good um, change. When looting death box player, you now see the health bars for everyone on their team. Oh, to tell if you're getting shot at or something? I don't know. Challenge now can be favorited by going to the challenge menu and clicking on the. I don't do challenges anyway, so I don't care. By pressing and holding F2 on game, you bring up the ability description of page characters only available on PC. This is the ability description. Okay, so you should know what you're. I don't know. Players cannot request better equipment by going to their inventory and paying a piece of equipment. <clears throat> Kinda like that, yeah. Your first challenge reroll today is now free. Doesn't affect me at all. Um, but I guess a lot of people that are just kind of casual players that don't have 400,000 legend tokens sitting in their uh, stash, they'll be fine. Rerolling your challenges will allow you to choose from BR folks challenge or any folks. That's really nice. I actually like that. Paulus Brace Corpse and Emos can now be favorited. This will be nice. I like that. Club invites. Yeah, fixed edge cases where an abandoned penalty would be incorrect to apply due to server errors. That's nice for rank grinders. Flight path adjustments. This is huge. This is huge. I saw this on Twitter. This is one of the ones that I ran into. The like edge dropship ones where it was like over here. I that was stupid. So dumb. This looks so much better. I like this a lot. This is huge. Oh, they did ring changes too. Um, sorry, this video is dragging on. This is going to be a really long video. I'm sorry. We're continuing to work on the Fight Night event to improve, uh, from the Fight Night event. Uh, so, Ring 4 pre rent time shrink from 2 minutes to 145. I like that. And they're slowing the round 6 ring shrink. Okay, that's really cool. That'll be really big for competitive. That's huge. I think that's only going to affect, like, high tier rank and competitive. But that's really cool. That's a really good change. I like that. Uh, fix it issue, your Bloodhound UI, that's awesome. Pathfinder graph tra gas traps and jump pads no longer float in the sky when placed next to a zipline. I never ran into that issue. I didn't even know that was a thing. Slight wall bumps no longer inversely cancel race tactical, so mantling no longer fixes or uh, cancels that. Decoys no longer die after a tick of thermite damage. Yeah. Ordinances will no longer stick or gets no longer get stuck and disappear when bouncing off jump pads. I never ran into that either. I didn't even know that was a thing. Death totems will no longer bounce when jump pads placed under it. Didn't even know that was a thing again. Players will no longer have weapons drawn if they're knocked and enter the fight night ring via jump pad. Huh. 
again, I didn't even know that was a thing. Updated Octane's helicopter emote to correctly remove his leg for which he's using instead helicopter. <laughs> Fix the extended problem for Watson's fence not appearing in certain situations. Uh, oh, block view and reloading Sentinel. Cool. Nice. Uh, fix more areas where low bracelet fails with nice red hand skin on console. Nice. Again, that's really good. Most of the stuff is just like quality of life stuff, um, random bug fixes. So I'm not really going to uh, uh, go over it a whole lot. But that's basically it. I don't want this video to drag on any longer because it's already been 25 minutes and you guys are probably bored with me uh, talking. If you guys did make it through the video, I do appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys uh, found any of this useful. And, um, you know, if you guys want to see more of these kind of videos in the future, let me know. I'm really excited to see what you guys think. Uh, if you guys stuck this far through the video and you guys really want to, you know, support the channel, want to see some of my gameplay live, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell, too, to be notified when I go live so you guys get, uh, you know, that update, that, that notification. See some of my gameplay live. Also, if you guys want to check out some 8 second gaming merch, we got hats, sweatshirts, t shirts, stuff like that. The link will be in the description down below. It'll just take you to the website. All you got to do is go to apparel, content creators, and then click 8 second gaming, and I pop up. I really like this stuff. I wouldn't be promoting it if I didn't like it. It's really cool. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and hopefully, I'll see you guys again very soon. Peace. <laughs>